this is when I start to talk like this. I don't sound anything like my shows. <laughs> Dusty's going, oh no, why did I fight my show? <laughs> All right, and we're live as, oh. as Michael Dobson is making me lose it just as we go right. live on camera. Right. He's not just that, that kind of guy. Not that sorry. Welcome everybody to the West Coast, San Jose, California. Beautiful 73 degree weather, bright and sunny. I took two minutes out of my day to go check with my tattoo artist on my new tattoo, my chest tattoo, which is going to be the, the Sonic Rain Boom, which goes over here into Rainbow Dash. It's going to be awesome. So awesome. He way outdid anything I could ask for. Way outdid. Um, you guys are going to be, this is thing is awesome. And you can, I can't wait to show it to you. I can't wait to get it tattooed to my body. Oh, it's going to be awesome. But you're not here to talk about my tattoo. No, we're not here to talk about my tattoo. We're here to talk with one, the man, the myth, the legend, Michael Dobson. Michael. I'd just like to talk about your tattoo. Oh, okay, sure. I wrote you on camera. Here, here it is. <laughs> oh, Mr. Dobson, how are you doing today? Really good, thanks. Thanks for having me on your show. This is pretty exciting. Absolutely, absolutely, man. We are like... Two peas in the pod because you're only two years older than I am, so we are the same. Right. We're the same yep. kind of knuckleheads. I know. The same kind. Yes. Of grown up in the same time period of you know, eight seventies, eighties cartoons and the nineteen eighty Olympic hockey team and and yep. eighty six Olympics and all that kind of stuff. You know, the yeah, whole yeah, thing. Yeah. You know, yep. Everything that went on. Very cool. Absolutely. Yep. Um, so uh, yes. we're gonna go straight into it. We're gonna go straight into a, uh, the stock. Thing I'm gonna, uh, this is episode seventy, by the way, seventy. My hey, is, cool. Okay, the voice actor of such classic, classic characters. <laughs> yeah, classic. that means you're old. Um, classic characters as Nappa and Kami from Dragon Ball Z. Leonardo. Thousand. Yes, Leonardo of the Ninja Turtles. Totally cool to be a turtle. Yeah, Cobra Commander himself. Oh, it's such a simple dream, really. Yes, as long as now a bulk of biceps. Yeah! And Dr. Caballeron. Yes. Yes. My little <laughs> pony. This man's, this man's list of, of IMDB goes back so far. It took me hours to pick out what we were going to talk about. Hours! Because That's he worked on everything that I loved back in the day. Sense. Pretty much. I mean, all this stuff. So the first <laughs> stock question I'm asking to everybody now, because it just pertains, right? What are some of your earliest memories yes. of cartoons or comics that you enjoyed as a kid? Oh, as a kid? Yeah. Back I, in the old days. We used to, my brothers and I used to used to just get comics. Okay. All the time. It was like and then uh, growing up in England, uh, there was one publication which I was really excited about. It was a sci fi magazine that only that came out every weekend. Uh -huh. And um, and I loved it because it had Doctor Who and um, Space nineteen ninety nine and stuff. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah. oh yes. I love that show. Loved it. <laughs> it was awesome. And so that was that 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 was my most favorite part of the week was running all the way to the to to the store mm -hmm. and grabbing my my copy of that magazine and then that was my weekend set because I was I was I was, I was just couldn't get and they would have these amazing um, science fiction illustrators and artists from all over the world contributing. There was a whole art section, so there was like. All the sci-fi art that I would clip out and paste to my wall and do all that kind of stuff. But my my brothers and I, we were totally into uh, all the DC and Marvel stuff that mm -hmm. was out, like um, at the, the, the comic stores at the time. And I remember um, like Fantastic Four and Superman and Batman and and all all the all those um, the comic books were huge favorites of ours. And we used to do. <laughs> we had no idea we'd end up doing this for a living one day, but we would just uh, take the comics and have them on the floor. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we would do all the voices for all the characters and do our sound effects. And, <laughs> do it all. It was really and, then, and then our parents would be subjected to listening to our little radio play that we put together on a cassette. And, uh, oh, you did that too? Yeah, yeah. It was oh, cool. man. Me and my buddies used to, like, uh, we'd sit, we'd go to my friend's house and we'd actually play records. And in between the records, we'd, we'd play Radio DJ. So we basically <laughs> had, we'd go back and forth like a morning show. And then we'd play another song and we'd do it again and we'd record it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's all kinds of fun. It was a blast, man. It was cool. Yeah, um, yeah. I actually, 
I was in the SCA. I'm not sure you know what that is, but Society of Creative Anachronism, which is guys beating on each other with sticks for fun. Um, we recreated the Middle Ages, right? <laughs> my brothers, we didn't have a name for it. We just did we just that. Beat on each other with sticks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my brothers did Which too. makes yours yeah. actually a lot more civilized than ours because yeah. we didn't have a name. We didn't have a name <laughs> for it. <laughs> it was just beating on each other with a stick. Yeah, we, yeah, we basically relived the Middle Ages, and one of the things was fighting. So we had sword and board, sticks, armor, and all kinds of stuff. So I went out to this one event. And unbeknownst to me, I'm sitting here fighting a guy and throwing shots and bang, bang, bang. And there's these two girls behind me. And the guy I'm fighting is starting to laugh. His apple. Ass, excuse me. Not buy some apples. But his, he's laughing. His his, 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 but he laughed off. his posterior off. Yes. So I turn around. And these two girls have things behind their back. I'm like, what the heck? So I go, I throw a shot at a guy. And one pulls up a pow. And a whap. And a crunch. <laughs> It's little signs, right? Every time I hit somebody, <laughs> they pull oh, no signs. Way. That's awesome. <laughs> it was funny. It was like, wow. Because yeah. they knew I was in the comic books. It was like, oh, right. that's freaking hilarious. <laughs> that is so awesome. Yeah. Um, having been yes. in the voiceover industry for such a long time, um, <laughs> is there an era of the business that you enjoyed more than any other? I think... Um... When we were, um, well, it's, it's hard to say actually because, I mean, what's interesting is is with the animation just becoming so lifelike and mm -hmm. you know production value going up and up and up all the time. I mean, like you look at one of the shows I'm working on right now with what Nerdcore has done with Max Steel. Uh -huh. I mean, it's like a John Woo film, man. It's it's like insane. It's like the camera angles and and uh, the special effects incorporated into the show. But just eye candy is just phenomenal. But 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 there is a nostalgic feel I have for the classically animated stuff. I remember when I worked on GI Joe Extreme, mm -hmm. um, they were still classically animating that show. Wow! And and that was the last show that I recall working on where I was fortunate enough to get a cell from from the show. Nice. Which was really cool. And they sent me the original background art too, which when I, I got it professionally mounted. Uh, wow. It was a company here in town that did animation cell work. That is cool. And, and they were like, I can't believe you got the original background art. Nobody ever gets that. So apparently that increased the value of it. But um, it was like a, a probably at least nine layers to it to create the image. Uh -huh. It's gorgeous. But, but I mean, I do, I do love that period. And, of course, that was a time, too, when, when anime was was a huge part of what we did up here. Like we were we were practically living at Ocean Studios, which was a blast. And then we had all this other stuff going on in this in the city too. And I and I think um I think I think like the mid to late nineties was 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 a was was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Because we were just doing so much stuff. Oh yeah. There was there was a lot of things and Vancouver especially at the time was uh, new territory for a lot of studios, they were just starting. To, I mean, we were just kind of coming into our own as as artists, you know, working in voiceover here. A lot of us came, you know, theater and film and television that was our backgrounds. And this thing, animation, was starting to take off, and consequently, the gaming industry was starting to bubble up, and things were happening with you know a lot of gaming companies here, and a, a lot of effects houses started producing games, and it was a very exciting time because everything was. Like, it was bubbling, and the brew was started, and it was all starting to go, and nobody knew where, like, how far it was going to go. It was, it was just a very exciting time. Yeah. And, and, and you know what? I know you, way back in the day, you yeah. guys basically got assigned to different things. Like, Dragon Ball Z comes up, and they give you Nappa, right? But has, has anybody seen your picture with Nappa next to each other? I mean, look, 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 at, this. <laughs> look at this picture I found, okay? Get this up here. And, that, and it's, it, it's like... I, it's like they, it's you. Okay, all you have to do is shave your head, right? A little thick on the eyebrows, you know, put on a scanner, yeah. and that's you. That's totally me, bud. That's totally you. Yeah. I mean, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the mustache is just. I shaved crazy. over 9,000 hairs off my hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect. I mean, geez. It's I got, got 9,000 hairs on my head. <laughs> I was like, which one's I'm episode? Like? Yeah, it was, I never thought of it that way, but it's it's kind of funny. Yeah, yeah, we do. Like, I actually did. I didn't shave a complete shave, like with a razor, but I used to just buzz it right to my scalp for a long time. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of that's kind of funny. Um, in 
looking up some history, uh, I found out that not only have you been an actor um, and a voice actor. I mean, you you acted on X Files for crying out loud uh, back in the day. Yeah. Um, voice actor, actor, private investigator. Oh, you found that <laughs> power lifter. Yes. And a private pilot. Well, I was training to be a pilot. I actually yeah. didn't get my license. Oh. I mean, I mean, that's what I was in England, and I came out here, and then that 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 my pursuit of that changed. Yeah. Because I was in a, I was in, in military school in, in England, so okay. I, I I um I was going to join the Royal Air Force. That's why I was, I was a flight sergeant in in the Air Training Corps in England, uh-huh. and um I just won a scholarship, and so I was going to be away for about six weeks, and then I was going to come back and write my ROTC, mm-hmm. and um then I I would have. Hopefully that all would have gone well, and I would have entered the Royal Air Force as a pilot officer and begun my like my training towards flying jets. Oh, so okay. I was wow. flying uh, single prop planes and gliders at the time. So I that mean, was fun. You've done so much stuff in your history. I kept thinking that maybe you were desperately you're just a secret member of the QD Mark Crusaders looking for your true talent. Don't forget MI five as well. Yeah, MI five also. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, baby. Yeah. Yes. I was with MI5 posing as a private investigator. Yes. I had to d- d- downplay my MO. That's how, that's how you got your English teeth fixed, right? What's that? That's how you got your English teeth fixed. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, I didn't know that was on there, too. But yes, that's true. Yeah. I'll, I'll take that. Okay, uh, we've, we've just gone that you were born in England, obviously, because we were talking about this English stuff. Um, yeah. and then your family moved to Canada. When did all this come about? Um... When I was 16, we we moved, and actually it was interesting because um, my poor brother, brother Brian, brother Brian, Brian. Yes. Um, he was he was quite sick with uh, with asthma at the time, Dude. and so and like I mean, really bad. Mm-hmm. Um, so he was in and out of hospital and um, missed a lot of school as a result of his asthma, and it was it was pretty scary time for my for like for all of us really because. You'd hear him at night, he was kind of like the creature. <laughs> oh, gosh. I know. I know. <laughs> it's not funny because it's just, and it's, yeah, and it was, uh, it was a very scary time. And, and, and England, you know, we were living right in London, so terrible, diesel. Terrible pollution. Yeah, and a lot of places were still burning coal. And yeah. so, so, I mean, the, the air quality was not good. So um, they they advi- our, our physician advised us said uh, Australia or Canada, mm-hmm. and when uh, so my parents ap- apl- applied to, to immigrate to both countries. Canada came up first, um, so it, it was really quick. I mean, I was I was supposed to be heading to Malta on a training um, uh, for training for six weeks of training mm-hmm. on a scholarship that I'd gotten. Right. And I had to report to my CEO and tell him that my parents were moving. My whole family's going to Canada, and I'm sorry, but I have to leave. Um, so that didn't go over very well. No. Um, but but it was good. It was. Uh, I had the choice to stay. I'm glad that I decided to to come because I, I love it here. I do love it here a lot. I love being in, in North America, and and I've been very fortunate with the opportunities that that have come my way as a result of that. Yeah, and, but it was a big life-changing thing. But luckily, Brian was better within a few months of being here. Good, that was awesome. the interesting thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I, we I grew up so Ontario close. first. I grew up so close to Ontario that I was playing in the Western Ontario Baseball League <laughs> for a while. Are you serious? Seriously, yeah. I, I played in the Western Ontario Baseball League for a year. Oh, you just hit the ball that far, and then when you ran into the ballpark, they are yeah, like, I, hey, you're in Canada now. You're in Canada now. <laughs> <laughs> I tell people the house I grew up in. Playing for us. The house I grew up in, Mike. Uh, you could walk out to the center of the street, turn left, and you were looking at Ontario at the end of the street, just across the river. Wow. Close enough, you could tell what car was driving by. Unbelievable. Sarnia. Uh, we were between Detroit and Sarnia. So oh, I, I know where you are. Yeah, right, right in there. So love that because we we uh, if there wasn't enough ice, we would put a bunch of guys in cars and vans, and we'd get take the the ferry over from Marine City to. Uh, Ontario, we'd go up near Sarnia and, and rent ice time. It was great That's... because you all throw in 20 bucks and we'd have a whole afternoon of, you know, perfect ice. It was kind of cool. Wow. <laughs> That'd be fun. Yeah. Um, so now, yes. that, now that we know that you're such a world traveler and we know <laughs> that you, you're, you're all into sports like I am, just <clears throat> into sports, what is yeah. your favorite sport? English football, Canadian football, or rugby? Ooh, just those three? 
Well, yeah, well, that's the three football sports, you know. You have, you oh, have yeah, English, yeah, English yeah. soccer, right? And Canadian yeah. football, which is completely different than American football. Yeah, and then yeah. rugby, which is the main sport, obviously. Uh, but out of those three, which one? And then what? what is your favorite favorite? Okay. Um, okay, I guess between those three, if I had a choice, I'd probably choose... Ooh. I'd probably choose um, what we call footy or soccer. Footy. Soccer. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a good one. Yeah. Soccer here in the colony. Because I do, yeah, I do uh, enjoy <laughs> it. Because I tune in and watch some of the matches from the UK. Uh-huh. I used to be a big, hardcore Fulham supporter. So, And plus, my next-door neighbor, um, he actually played for Portsmouth. Ooh. And then he played uh, on England as a goalie. Oh, that's nice. That's cool. Yeah, so... So there's a little shout out to Tony, my neighbor. Yes. <laughs> so what's, so, what's no, your but, favorite sport then? What is your favorite all over? What you like to watch? What you like to do? What's your sport? Um, I guess for sports that I like to watch, it's it's hockey and and uh, NFL. Ish. Okay. Yeah, I love football. Actually, yeah, I always I, I when I first came to Canada and I I saw them playing football, mm-hmm. I was just like, that's a pretty cool game. I'd like to learn how to play that game. So it's it's um, and I, and I wish I'd grown up with it because I, I think I would have really enjoyed playing that sport. It would have been fun. I did. Um, for me, what I ended up um, immersing myself in was uh, martial arts. Okay. So I um, I started off studying judo, mm-hmm. and then uh, I started. Uh, the, wow, I can't talk anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> Interview's over. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the meter just ran out. I'm sorry, I got to be plugged. I got to find some change. You, you go unhook <laughs> Mike from the furnace and bring him to the microphone right now. <laughs> Damn, I did tell you that earlier, yes, didn't I? Did. Yes. The real mic is duct taped to the furnace. Yes. yes. Um, so I went on from there to uh, White Crane and Tiger Kung Fu. Mm-hmm. And then I studied uh, Shotokan Karate and uh, then eventually Jiu Jitsu. Wow. Well it was fun. Well, it was interesting because. Before they called it MMA or mixed martial arts, right. um, it was really, I guess, you know, what Arnold was to lifting, right. you know, to the whole gym culture, mm-hmm. um, Bruce Lee is to martial absolutely. arts. Yeah, absolutely. And he, um, his philosophy, you know, I had read his book and and he was always saying uh, the, the benefit of mixing styles mm-hmm. and being fluid and being able to go from one style to the next style. And I actually found that in competitions... Um, it was a great asset because he would do some things and people, if you were able to pull somebody out of their element, he had the art of surprise and it worked oh, yeah. really well. Oh yeah. Be water, my friend. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Um, so going forward, the list of characters you voiced over the years is like a who's who of that animation history. Napa, Leonardo, Cobra Commander, Batman, and Joker for crying out loud. From black and white. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was the one role... For you, that you just loved, that you just cannot forget the one, the one thing. I know you've done a ton of stuff. You've probably forgotten more than you've done. But what was that one role that really sticks with you that you really liked to do? Well, you know, the, the funny thing to the answer to that question is, is like they're all kind of like people that you that you got to know really well. Mm-hmm. I'm not quite sure what a shrink would say about that, but um, <laughs> 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 but but. Uh, but but, you know, you always, it's like all actors say of all characters that you play. I mean, you, you have to find something, even when you're playing the bad guys, you know, you have to find it, something in them that you like, because otherwise your you, your audience is not going to like them if you don't like them. Right, yeah. Um, it's, but, um, and so, you always have a lot of enjoyment with all the different characters that you end up playing. But for me, I, I guess, because I've always been a huge Batman fan since I was a kid, Right. that when... And, and it's not necessarily because he was like the most fun to play, but it was just like from a from a, like a like a oh, opus part of my career. Right. When when I had the opportunity to play Batman, I I literally couldn't sleep. I just thought, oh, no way. And it was like seriously, I'm gonna are you woo. And I know it wasn't like the mainstream stuff that's up there. It was kind of off the beaten path, being you know, black and white. But I was still honored by the fact that it was um, an homage to. To the great illustrators and artists and story um, writers for, for the Batman Black and White series, you know they they picked um, the award-winning stories from that series and did the motion comics with them, and so 
because it was that and that back that black and white series, I really loved it, and, and I felt it was a real honor to be involved with that. So that was something that that really struck a chord with me. And it was funny because the Star Scream was is another one of those characters that I liked him because I, I as a character he's so torn, you know, and and especially I know it wasn't. Um, so there was mixed feelings on the reception with Armada, Cybertron, and Energon, um, as to you know, because most most fans obviously are huge fans of the G1, as I am myself. Mm -hmm. um, but um, but it was interesting, you know, just just his battle between Megatron and then actually even that sometimes kind of thinking like, hmm, maybe I should become an Autobot. <laughs> put wheels on this. Wait a minute, those guys are here. nicer than Megatron is, but it was it was. But I mean, I, I just found he, he was a lot. He was he was a lot of fun to play, you know. I, 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 even though I mean, you're stuck to the script, and when you go in, um, it was interesting too for me in the sense that when I actually didn't um, really shoot hard for for Starscream. I mean, I would have loved to play them, but it was difficult for me because I respected so much what Chris Lotta had done with that character. Mm -hmm. Um, all I could think was that Armada starts off like a hundred million years back, right? Right, right. So there was some creative license there, right? Uh, to because I was thinking that well, I'd like her stuff to stand on his on its own because it was just so good. I, I just didn't really think that, and and I, and I don't know because I never had this conversation with Hasbro if if that was part of the decision either. But I think probably what helped was the fact that it was away from what. Chris had done with Elmazov, so you could see that it was Starscream, but not doing what Chris Lada did. You know what I mean? Right. That gave me a little bit of latitude to work with, and, and uh, yeah, it was it was feel cool in the sense where I, I I didn't want to fill somebody else's shoes who'd done such an amazing job and had such a huge fan base. Oh, yeah. It was it was me. I was just sort of this is another incarnation of Starscream, if you will. Right. Um, tell yeah. us a bit about. Geez, you've been in so long. You've got your own studio. Studio making a sound. Limited. Thanks. Making a sound. Limited. McKenna. 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 Yeah, they, they, they went to that. Yeah, the, in Hawaii. <laughs> it's on the island of Maui. The, Maui is a place called McKenna Cove. Oh, McKenna. I thought it was making yeah. a. <laughs> like you're making a sound. There you go. <laughs> I'm making a sound. Um, Take this out. I'm making a sound. I'm making a studio. Cheers. Um, it must be really nice to just go in your own studio whenever you feel like it, and just cut whatever you want. You know, nice. what, what is it what is it like to basically now get into a point in your career that you've got your own dang studio it is pretty cool is it pretty cool yeah um and i love it too it, it's um i've got a nine by seven whisper room uh -huh. it's all nicely ventilated and everything and um it's a really comfortable place to work in and uh, you know over the years i've upgraded my gear and th things like that mm -hmm. but i mean um and we have a three-story house, and the basement's all finished, and it, it's 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 cool. It's, it's kind of like a, it's it's sort of like a high octane guy cave. Nice. <laughs> I, I gotta visit that. Bring, it is pretty cool. I'll, I'll, like, bring, just, I'll, bring, the, I'll bring the twenty of Molson Canadian, and we'll just like record. Some apples. You love it too, man, because I got a room where my guitars are and everything. Oh, so dude, that's I'll bring my bass. Out. So I I go in there and noodle around on my guitar and. Yeah. And I close the door, and it's all like low lighting and stuff, wow. and it's kind of like my chill room, which wow. is kind of cool. So I'm pretty lucky because I've got these two spaces to play in. Yeah, I'll bring the bass guitar up, and we'll do something. Well, yeah, that'd, that'd be, be cool. cool. Um, your webpage, oh my god, That's... your webpage is the standard of all self-promotion websites I've ever seen. Seriously? Yeah, it's awesome. Oh my god, if there's anything I want to know about you, it's there. Anything. Thanks, man. And it's like, did you do that all yourself? Yes. Or did you have it? You did it yourself. Yeah. Wow. You guys, you guys got out there, you got to go check out Michael Dobson's website because if you are your own voice actor, you want to self promote yourself, copy that whole freaking website because it's the way to, it's done. That's the way. I it's said, done. Hey, it makes me feel so good for you to say that, man, because I, I you know, you yeah. build it, and I, and I didn't know like I, I, I encourage people to give me some feedback so I, I know like is it good, you like it or it's, it's, it, it tells you everything that you do without you know, being preachy about it. It's like really well done. I really like it. I mean, I wish I had one that good, but it's like, it, it's it's you know that's a self promotion thing. That the Manliest Brony website is awesome. I mean, we're doing really great stuff with it. But if I'm gonna self promote myself, I'm gonna do a whole complete new one and copy everything you did because that's, <laughs> wow, that's awesome. 
Um, <laughs> Thanks, Dusty. Yeah, check that out. Um, Thanks, man. That was, the, that was the best review I've had on my website ever. That's awesome. Thank you. I mean, gee, you, you've got videos of what you've done. You've got lists of what you've done. You've got, you know, direct contact to you and to all your agents and everything. It's, it's, and on top of that, it's beautiful. Oh, you know, it's, it doesn't look like it was. It came out of you know stock footage stuff. It's, it looks like you know artistically put together. Thank it's, you. It's really nice. Um, you now this you know of course I went to the website and I watched everything there you know because I had to do my research. Did you really? I had to do my research. So you are a. Really, and he still wanted to talk to me. That's yeah, crazy. Of course. Um, <laughs> you are a really wonderful narrator. Wonderful narrator, um, which obviously comes from years and years of doing it. Uh, but what kind of tips? Can you give aspiring narrators or people who would like to try their hoof at a voiceover career, a voice work career anyway, what, what are some uh, small tips that somebody can have for, you know, doing a narration? I think, I think one of the key things is, because I started off in theater, mm -hmm. was, um, was engage your audience. Okay. You know, it's like, um, when, you're, when you're reading something, you always got to think of people being in the room with you. Mm -hmm. and, and then think about, you know, what the target is, you know, what age group is going to be interested in the material that you're narrating. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think it's that, getting back to that whole sort of theater in the mind. I think if you can visualize it as you're reading it mm -hmm. and actually be there and, and be experiencing those emotions with the characters that you're reading about and as you go through, it just, I think it's just an innate thing that happens um, that organically I think people are just more engaged because you're obviously really caring about what it is that you're reading about. And so it's, just, it's like, I guess it's the same sort of thing as if you've got a musician that's just technically trained and just playing a song note for note, it's kind of like, eh. Yeah. But, but when, you, when you see somebody just grooving there on the guitar and just bending every note and just every, every, every note's got a purpose and, they're, and they're, just, they're right there and they're phrasing everything just beautifully and putting their own heart and soul into it. And I guess maybe that's the biggest thing is like, that right there is, is like put some can, soul in, man. I, I can I can I can fathom that because I've been taking bass lessons for a year, and mm -hmm. at the end of every month, our school has a band jam where everybody who's a student comes in and plays together. And yeah. for the longest time, I was like upstairs trying to trying to get every note perfect, trying to get every note perfect, trying to get every note perfect for months. And I'd go to the band practice and I'd flub it, and I mean, I get mad at myself, and I wouldn't finish the song correctly because I was mad at myself. And it's like one month I just said. I know these songs well enough. I just practiced a couple times, and I went into the band practice, and the first song I played, I grooved it, and it was sort of like it was sort of like when you're playing sports and you and you basically hit you know everything right. Yeah. That 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 moment where you can do no wrong. Well, you're right in the moment. It's you're like right one of those moment, things. Right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there grooving. You know, to to, to what I even remember the song, but I'm sitting there grooving to it, and one of the guitar teachers was like. Go off of him. The bass player's got it. He's into a groove. Do it. It's like, and so everybody's playing off of me. And I was like, wow, that was so cool. I was just. Is that, isn't that awesome when that happens? Yeah, when that happens. It's, it's freaking. I always say to people, it's, it kind of, I liken it to sort of like, uh, you know, it, is you, don't, you know when you're a kid and you're just doing something and, and you just, you're just acing. Like you're running really fast. Yeah. You, you, but it's that moment that you kind of go. Wow, I am, a, I am the fastest runner in the world. Look at my... Ah! <laughs> yeah, it's just like, it's like in sports when you're in the zone, right? Yeah, what is it? When you're playing baseball and the guy throws you this stinking hanging curveball and it's juicy dripping with you know gravy and it's like you know you're going to hit that thing about 50 million miles and it's halfway yeah. to you. And it's like, I'm going to hit that. And I'm going to hit that a very long way because it's like right there. Yeah. And, and that's the zone, right? And just yeah. when you're in the zone, it's like... Nothing like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. But it's that moment that you pull yourself out of it yeah. and you start thinking too much with your head and yeah, then all of a sudden you're, 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 you're on your way to the ground then. Um, having now played yes. Bulk Biceps and Dr. Caballon on our favorite show, My Little Pony, did they have you in the studio with the rest of the cast at the same yeah. time, ensemble yeah. style, yes? Yep. Yeah. yeah? How was that? Uh, do you do that a lot or do you do mostly work by yourself, like in your studio? Do you do no, ensemble a lot or is it? different the, well the way it works is that we've got um there's two two setups of two different ways of doing records mm -hmm. the, um if you do an adr which is automated dialogue replacement oh, right that's the acronym mm -hmm. it was um they bring you in and you're by yourself and it's kind of like what everybody likens to you know seeing robin williams uh, and mrs doubtfire with his job you know it's just it's kind of like um 
you're in there, you're looking at the screen, you have a time code, you have the time code matches on your script. And so when you're looking at your lines, you can see your, what your end time is and what your out time is, and that gives you an idea of how many seconds you have to deliver the line. So that right away is your precursor to whether or not you have to deliver it fast or, you know, or you've got lots of room to breathe. Mm -hmm. um, so that lets you know sort of the pacing of the line. But that's called ADR, and we always do that solo. We're in the studio by ourselves, and we're just matching the mouth flaps of, of our characters. Mm -hmm. And then when we do prelay, which is, which is uh, when we lay down the voice tracks first and then they animate to our voices later, mm -hmm. um, that's when they bring everybody as in that's, that's in the episode and we're in, like you said, like an oval around, all looking at one another, right. and we record as a group. And the only thing that you got to do, you got to remember, is that you got to give the engineer time to switch the faders, so bring one mic up and close another mic off. Right. So um, the, only, the only technical thing about that is to always remember, like, when a person finishes their line, give it that beat and then say your line. Don't jump right on the line. There can't be any overlapping or anything like that. So My Little Pony, because they animate to the voices after, is that's the prelay process. Mm -hmm. And so we do that with all the cast. Yeah. Um, the cast, we, we've known all the cast. A lot of them have been on this show. How, how was it for you working with that ensemble for the first time? Was it... Yeah, well, you know, were they really a great fun group? Did... They're horrible people. Horrible people. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad we finally got to that because I want to talk about it. <laughs> 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 no, you know what? They're they're like um, they're so it, we're so blessed, man. Because on, honestly, and people probably get that vibe from you know from the, the chats that you know from time to time when they see everybody tw on on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the sessions and the, the photographs that we post and stuff. I can honestly say that they're like, that network of people is like family. Uh -huh. And and I really feel blessed and fortunate to, to be working with them. For, I know it sounds like, but it's true. They're incredibly talented people. And they're really, really amazing individuals as people, too. So, I mean, the wonderful thing is, even when somebody's new coming into, you know, into the... Into the, in, in, into the group, mm -hmm. there's always support. You know, right away you'll see you know, like a veteran actor going over and showing them how to set up their script and get, putting them, you know, at ease. And there's lots of support. Right. And and so when when you show up on a show, it's like, hey, how you doing? Oh, you on the, today's episode? That's awesome, hey, but Who are you playing? And the, and and it's 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 um it's pretty cool that way. And so so the thing was when I came in, um. I'd, I'd done, you know, I had been on other DHX shows before in the past. And the producers knew me, and um, and I guess they had me in mind for for bulk biceps. Okay. Um, and so um, I brought in. I was I was kind of not really knowing what 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 was going to be. I, I auditioned for Doctor um, Caballero, but I didn't audition for bulk biceps. But they knew me. For, they, I played similar characters before, like what you're saying, and they knew, you know, mm -hmm. kind of what my what, what my resume consisted of. So when I arrived there, we had this big conversation about the character, mm -hmm. and um, and it was funny because when we first started recording, I wasn't sure like how far I should be going with this guy, or and they, and they were always like looking through the glass at me, and going, "No, man, just keep going. This is awesome. Just more, and more. Yeah, that's, that's good." I'm going, "It's not too much." I go, "No, it's great. Bring it on." So. I was having a blast, cool. and, it, and it was funny too because the like what uh, you guys were saying, you know, it was mm -hmm. this was the first time that he had a lot of dialogue and stuff, right. and so it was the, it was new for the cast too, mm -hmm. and and every time I opened up my mind and, and mouth and had a, a you know a chunk of dialogue to say, everybody just cracked up laughing, and we had to <laughs> had to reset because people were just going, "That's hilarious, that's too funny." <laughs> <laughs> so. So I was I don't I don't know if I had too much fun, but I gotta say I had a blast. And then the cool thing was, um, you know, we were wrapped for the day, uh -huh. and I was standing out in the uh, uh, outside of the studio, getting ready to head out. And the producers came walking up, and they just had big smiles on their face, and I got two thumbs up from from them both, which was really nice. It was like, Great. yeah, you guys are happy. And went, yeah, it was awesome. Thanks, man. So that yeah, was pretty cool. Okay, last question before we go to commercial. Okay. If there is one character mm -hmm. that you have not voiced that you would like to what would that character be 
Ooh. Win by being Homer Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's a job for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> that show's never gonna end. <laughs> Ever. Not that I'd have any ulterior motive other than the art of the show, to be on it. Yes. Um <laughs> <laughs> That would be pretty that would be pretty cool. Yeah. To be on The Simpsons. Yeah. Well, I mean it's just such a part, huge part of well, hey, I mean well, it's part of pop culture you, now. You know, Weird Al Yankovic's been on The Simpsons, now he's been on my little pony, you go the way. You know, you could be <laughs> I'll get on. The, I'll get on the show finally, and I'll be like so excited, and then I'll find out. You know, they're ending the season now. It's a wrap. But you got on on that last episode. Way to go! But 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 oh <laughs> yeah. Oh well. Oh well. <laughs> so with that, with that we're going to commercial. We oh, we gotta back, go from commercial, we're gonna now? commercial now. When we come back from commercial, we're gonna go through convention season. Everything that's uh, fit to print on conventions, and then we're going to go into charity work, and then we're going to get Screwball in the chat for all you guys out there to ask this wonderful gentleman everything that you have on your mind about anything. I'm having a lot of fun. Thanks, guys. Yes. We'll be back in just a little bit. Hello, mares. Look at your stallion. Now back to me. Back to your stallion. Now back to me. Sadly, he isn't me. But he could smell like me if he stopped using mare scented body wash and switched to apple spice. Look down. Back up. Where are you? You're in an orchard with a stallion your stallion could smell like. What's in your hoof? Back to me. I have it. It's two tickets to the Grand Galloping Gala. Look again. The tickets are now diamonds. Anything is possible when your stallion smells like apple spice and not a mare. I'm a horse. <laughs> That's right, folks. Apple Spice Body Wash. If it's good enough for Big Mac, it's good enough for you. It's good enough for me. I use it every day. And you know what? My mirror comes running whenever she comes over for the weekend. She loves the scent of apple spice in the morning. Don't you? Love you, Amy. Yes, see? We're in my, we're in my half a heart for Amy right now today. So the, uh, we're back. We're back. It's awesome. Uh, go buy some Apple Spice Body Wash or Big Mac will hurt me. Um, conventions. Convention season. Babscon. BabsCon is coming up. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh. oh, yeah. There's some stuff going down at BabsCon. But it's going to be April 18th through 20th, 2014. Andrea Libman, Tara Strong, Kathy Westlook, Nicole Oliver, Peter New, wow. M. Barrow, M. A. Larson, Amy Keating Rogers, <laughs> Megan McCarthy, Brian and Brianna Drummond, Jason Thiessen, Big Jim Miller, Josh Haber, Natasha Livinger, and now, Andy Price, who is that's cool. the main artist for our wonderful comic book that's going on right now. And, of course, you can get 10% off your registration by using all capitals, So Manly, the number 10. So Manly 10 will get you 10% off any registration there. So, we, we hooked you up for that. 10% off. And you know that there's this challenge going on. This little hoof wrestle that I and Private Stampede will be having. And he made a very nice reply to me last week. So I thought only it's only fair and only right to make a reply back. So this one's for you, Pat. You know, a freshly pressed white t-shirt and lifting a few weights and you think you're better than me. Oh no, I knew the inside of a gymnasium while you weren't even a twinkle in your father's eye. That's right, twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. I know what you are. Do you? Do you know what you are? You're a precious little snowflake. And Kababscon, I will be the radiant heat of Princess Celestia's awesome sun. 
Melting your dreams. That's right, melting your dreams. All of your dreams. Oh, yeah. That's right, Tyler. Bring it. We're going to be ready for you. It's going to be awesome. Onward. The next. The next. TrotCon. June 20th through 22nd, Columbus, Ohio. They have Emily Tay from Pegasus Sisters Live, Pe Pixel Kitties, the great artist, Eurobeat Brony, Cyril the Wolf, and now Heather Breckel of the IDW Comics team will be there. Everfree Northwest, July 4th to 6th, 2014 in Seattle. Marika Gilda the Griffin herself is going to be there. And now announced, Georgia Ball and Heather Neufler of the IDW Comics team. The comics guys are getting all the rate. They're going everywhere. They're going everywhere. Trust me. By the end of this, you're going to find out Wow, is there anybody else who works on IDW Comics? They're all there. Um, registration is open. Panel submissions are open. Vendor apps and Pony Stock musician applications are open, so check it out. Um, BronyCon, August 1st through 3rd, 2014. Back in Baltimore. Reg is open. Hotel Reg is open. Kazumi Evans, Daniel Ingram, Shannon Kent, Katie Cook, Tony Fleece, and Heather Breckel. More IDW people are going to be there, so check that one out. Galacon, August 2nd through 3rd for you guys over in Ludwigsburg, Germany. <laughs> uh, tickets are on sale. February 10th they went on, and they're, they're selling fast. You better get over there. They actually got Nicole Oliver. Nicole Oliver is going to be there, Princess Celestia herself. They also got Living Tombstone, who's going to be there. Brony Can, August 22nd through 24th, Richmond, B.C., Canada, announcing their first guest. Their first guest? Guest. Amy Meberson, artist on the IDW comic series. I told you, they're going everywhere. Uh, the changings are coming and they need your help, so check out their website. They need some help over there. So we go on to charity work. We did, for the last charity, Sarah and Ari's charity, the Collation for the Homeless Inc., New York City. We did 615 bits on a 500-bit goal. Thank you very much. You're awesome. Uh, oh. Yes, so we are going to give away some stuff. And I got them right over here. So... We start off, start off with this, this Rainbow Power Twilight Sparkle right here. That. We got a pack from the Collectible Guard game. So we got a dog tag, and we got a My Little Pony first series blind bag. Not only that, because we cracked 500 bits, you get the nice, beautiful coffee mug full of Rainbow Dash stuff that was given to us by Pink Pearl Apple. Thank you, Pink. So, all that stuff's going to go to the person who I draw out of this hat full of names. Right here. So, we're going to dig in here to this hat full of names. Dee, 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 and pick one. Just one, Dusty. That one. Okay. Uh, doo, doo, doo. Who is this this week? Dr. Brecht, I think. Is that how we say it? D-R-B-E-C-H-E-T. Dr. Brecht. So, you need to contact me, which is Dusty at manlingsbrony.com, and we will get that stuff to you. Thank you very much, everybody, for giving us a couple of bucks to help people in New York not freeze their tukusas off. Not freeze their tukusas off. Yes. So now, new charity. New charity this week for Mike. Michael Dobson's charity is the Rare Disease Foundation in Vancouver, B.C. Tell us a bit about it, Mike. Hey, it's, um, it's a foundation that was set up by um, a Dr. Milan Patel. And um, sadly, there are cases of Diseases that are diagnosed by children get sick and their parents bring them to hospitals and tests are run and they can't figure out what is wrong with them. And later on, um, once everybody's, they've been everywhere and seen all the specialists that, that basically exhausted the system, if you will, the medical system, um, they'll end up at this uh, rare disease foundation, which is designed to to, tr to try and find out what these diseases are and try and create a cure. And they work uh, internationally around the world with researchers and doctors and scientists um, to, to create cures for, for these, um, um, you know, these, these horrible things that um, can occur from time to time when um, whatever's happening to that individual, um, they can't explain what it is. And that I can't imagine what that would be like yeah. to to be told by a physician that um, it's something that nobody's seen before, and the the reason why I chose it was because it's one of those um, areas of medicine which is that doesn't get a lot of funding. Mm 
um, because it's it, because literally it's a very nebulous area of medicine, right. and um, and so uh, I know Dr. Patel and um, and I I've been to their research facility and it's amazing the kind of stuff that they do and and the people that they work with, and um, and I just thought it'd be really cool to be able to create some awareness and let people know that there is such a foundation out there. Mm -hmm. And um, that if we might be able to contribute in one way or another, that would be really cool. Absolutely. We're going to do it. So if you guys go over to manliesbrony.com, you will find the link over to the charity. Register manliesbrony.com with the same name you're using over there so I can find you when you get a giveaway like this stuff over here. So for giving anything at all, you're in for these prizes right here. So we're going to do it again. We got another pack of collectible cards. We got another first run of the blind bags. We got another dog tag. We have, I checked, I picked this up at Hot Topic. This is kind of cool. This is a Boxos paper craft play set, which I had never seen before. Look at all this stuff you get on the back here. You get, you get the four ponies, you get everything going on. You can put that all together, put it on your shelf. It's kind of cool. So that, not only that, we're going to go a step further. Before we even get to the $500, a step further, I picked up one of these. The Derpy Messenger Bag from Hot Topic. Check that out. Isn't that cool? So wow. that's going to go, too. So all of that stuff, just for giving us anything, anything at all. Now, if we crack 500 bones, 500 bits. That would be so awesome. This. Oh, this is awesome. This is a one of two ever made. This is a etched dog tag by Silver Slinger. Year of the Pony with Pinkie Pie on it. On the back, it says Year of the Pony. It is rhine studded. It is awesome. If we crack 500 bits, this is up for grabs. And not only that. Wow. Not only that. I think that Mike might want to actually give like an autograph or something. Like that. Yes, I will. So, not only will Mike give an autograph, but I'm going to try and get Pixel Kitties to do you up some awesome autograph art. Because you're going to go to a convention this year. I know you're going to at some point. <laughs> and it's sort of like a collecting thing. You know, all the voice actors have, like, Pixel Kitties art for their, for their autographs tables at the mm -hmm. 20 convention. So I'm going to get her, I'm gonna get her to, to get you a bulk biceps, Dr. Caballeron. Wow. An autograph piece. And we're going to see if we can get her to do that. If she has time, hey, I'm, yeah. I'm not going like, to commit her unless she has some time. Hey. So we're going to do that. Okay. If not, I'm sure he's got, like, a Leonardo or something up there he can sign. Most definitely, yeah. So, yep. So we'll get you an autograph from Mike if we crack 500 bills, and that is charity. And I, I've got a um, talk. I did a show way back called Broken Saints, and I'll, I'll um, I, I have a DVD uh, set. It's a rare, it's a first edition. I'll, I'll, I'll autograph it and, and throw that in there as well. Whoa! Are you kidding me? That is super awesome. Super awesome. Look at that. Not only the man is generous to a fault. <laughs> First edition DVDs signed by the man if we crack 500 bills. Plus all that other stuff. Are you kidding me? That is awesome. And whoever, you know, on 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 uh, freaking... Uh, somebody on Equestria Daily said that, you know, we don't give good prizes now and then. It's like, you know what? You should, you should feel happy just to give a couple of bits to somebody who needs it. You know, I'm giving you all this stuff out of the goodness of my heart. And just because we could use a little bit more effort to get a couple of bucks for people. So, you know what? We do the best we can because, you know what? Most of it comes out of my pocket. And the cool thing about this foundation is the money will go directly to them. Directly to them, not through... Yeah. Not through some board or... Board or something it, like that. It goes directly to people who need it. It goes to directly to the research facility. Which Absolutely. Is, directly yeah. to the research facility. You know what I need from you, Mike? Yeah. I need you... To find Screwball for me because I lost him again. <laughs> I did. You know, Twy, Twy Kane, where, where's Screwball? Twy, where is Screwball? I know you hit him. Where? where, where he, oh. Can you call for Screwball, Mike? Because I, I don't know. Twy Kane is hiding him again. Screwball! Oh, my God! Don't. There he is. <laughs> Screwball! Amazing. <laughs> Screwball! Yeah! <laughs> I think we found him. There you go. <laughs> I swear I could hear you from provinces away even if my mic even if this whole computer was muted I would have still heard you from here <laughs> absolutely and you, know, you know what gang you know what it is birthday week because yeah. both Screwball on the 20th 
and Cowboy Dave on the 23rd both had birthdays this week. So everybody oh, say happy birthday to Cowboy and Screwball. Oh. Yes. Happy, happy birthday. birthday to you. <laughs> Yes. His birthday's over 9,000! Well, he's not that old. Not that old. He's over 9,000! Yes. And a little bit later in the program, we're going to show you Screwball's very first, his own bit for the show. So a little bit later, we're going to oh. play Screwball's brand new bit. So Ooh. we're going to get into questions from you out there. So Screwball, give me a couple of questions. Okay, I'm going to bring this in uh, from Firemane. Uh, you may know him as making these amazing wood carvings. Amazing. Yeah, amazing. I, was, I, I was looking at them today, as a matter of fact. Yes. And yes, I, I, and... I saw Stampede holding one, I think. Yep, that was one of those. Yeah, it was amazing. I even have one myself. Mm -hmm. um, and a question for you, Michael, is... Um, is there a scene with bulk you would like me to carve, or, or is the picture that Private Stampede sent you the one you want? Oh. I think... Uh, I, like, I like that side profile picture of him where he's, he's just kind of... <laughs> looks like, you're talking to me? talking to me? He's kind of like a... I, I think... Um, it's one of the first ones that I got. Yeah, I thought that was that was pretty cool because it shows his tattoo on his hind quarter and everything too. Oh, I know which one. I know which one you're talking about. He's just standing there, and he looks. <laughs> He's just standing there. I'm like you talking to me? You talking to me? I like I like that I like that pose. I thought that was pretty cool. It's it just kind of a funny pose, I guess. I, I'm gonna cut in here, Screwy, because Tyler sent me a message. He says he has no net to get to because he's doing his his uh, uh, his army stuff. He says, the question here is for Mike. Aware of the original Yeah before you did the episode? See, was I aware of it? Yeah. Were you aware of it, saw it, heard it? No. 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 So they didn't, they didn't, uh... They, they, we had, we, I, I, um... They didn't pollute they, you. They wanted your version. I guess, yeah, I guess, I guess they, they, yeah, they didn't play me any voice raps or anything. They just, uh, they, they told me what he was like, mm -hmm. and they really wanted me to... To kind of just run with it, which was which was which was fun. Yeah, there you go. Okay, screw it, go ahead. Okay, so this one is from uh, Bot One One Seven. Now, I don't know, Michael. Have you have you been watching any of uh, the the pre most recent episodes by any chance? I saw I saw a little bit of um, the one that aired. Uh, what was it? Uh, I guess it's two weeks ago. I was watching it with my kids. Mm -hmm. um, trying to remember which which one that was. I've seen the one. Um, that uh, when we did the equestria, we had to team equestria and all that. Right. And we, we competed. Yeah, that was that was fun. I saw that one. And um, yes. anyway, sorry, I'm not really answering your question. So no, it's all right. That, that was uh, I was wondering because I I bought one one seven wants to ask for all. What do you think of the newest episode, um, uh, Twilight Time? I haven't seen that one yet. Yeah, yeah. I've seen it. Um, I thought it was rather cute. I thought it was. I thought it really. It really spoke to, you know, don't try to, you know, use your friends to get anything, right? Don't, right. You, just because you have famous friends doesn't mean anything. They're just your friends. Right. You know, so don't do that. It's, it's one of those things where friends are friends and that's just the way it is. Don't, don't, don't use somebody else's station to get things for yourself, blah, 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 blah. Right. So it, it was really a cute little way of doing that, 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 uh, that story. I'm blown away by the musical numbers on that show. Are you kidding? Oh, so, Daniel yeah. Ingram and Andrew and Stefan are, are, are killing it. They're killing yeah. it this season. They're yeah. Out of the yeah. park, man. They're throwing up curveballs and they say, oh, yeah, I can do that. So they, they all of a sudden they do freaking barbershop quartet. Oh, yeah, we can do that. It's like, yeah, oh, I saw that. Like, that was great. Are you kidding me? That. that was so cool. That was, bum, 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 ba -dum, bum, 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 oh, bum, I love that. I love that. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, it was it was mind blowing actually. Amazing. So good, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Next. Yeah. And it oh. looks amazing. The show looks oh. great. It's it's the music that always gets me. It's so well done. Um so this one is from Pink Pro Apple. Um she actually just got a new puppy recently. Um and she gave it the most adorable name imaginable, which is Dr. John Watson. <laughs> <laughs> well she'll have to get a Sherlock now for sure. She has a Sherlock too. Uh, oh, did she, she really? Sherlock, so now I got Sherlock and Watson, so 
I thought that's the coolest thing ever, but she just wants to, uh, she, she just wanted to, uh, uh, can you all say hi to my new puppy, Dr. John Watson? He's watching you silently judging. Silently judging me, are you watching? <laughs> Hello, Dr. John Watson, how are you? Hello, puppy. Yes, yes you're me, cute fellow. Mm. <laughs> that's pretty you, cool. You know what, you were actually on, um, what was the show? Uh, oh. Sherlock in the 22nd Century? Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. You were. Yes, I was. That. There's a, like a little crazy comeback there. It's like, wait a minute, you were actually on the show, <laughs> which I saw a couple episodes of because somebody else was on the show. <laughs> I was on it and went, wow, this is really weird, really strange. Yeah, Jason Jason uh, Stanford Gray was yeah. was uh, Sherlock. Yeah. Yeah. That was fun. Next. Ah, oh, I had to pull it out again. Uh, one thing I'm just reading. Uh, oh yeah, okay. I never knew this until the Andy Mac mentions this. I never knew this. Um, question for Michael: Is there any difference between the actual process of voice recording for something like My Little Pony as opposed to something like Dawn of War, which is a video game that I seen you even did some voice work on? Also, right. how fun is it to? Uh, how fun is it knowing you have two franchises franchises as wildly different as My Little Pony and War? Hammer 40k on your resume. <laughs> we like talk like this for big trolls. <laughs> Can I get in on those? I'd like yes. to get in on those. You, you gotta get in on those. You'd be perfect, man. It'd be awesome. I'm on it. <laughs> I know it's, it is kind of crazy. That's true. That's they're they're literally universes apart, not just worlds apart. But um, yeah, it's it's pretty fun. I've been very fortunate. That's that's for sure. It's um, it's a. I guess the, the difference between the two is is um, one. I leave my vocal cords strapped around the microphone, and <laughs> <laughs> and hope that they'll come back someday. And the other one, I leave and I'm all happy, and my vocal cords are still intact. Yeah, you bought and paid for these vocal cords here. Have them. <laughs> Please take them. They're raw and they're really hurting me right now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they can be. Uh, Nappa did that to me on Dragon Ball Z. Mm. Yeah, he yeah. did a lot of screaming, yeah. especially in the the, the the final episodes. Final episodes were tons yeah. of screaming on Nappa. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, that was crazy. And then we had um, Barry Watson. He was the producer on the show. Um, he was sitting there watching. He'd be going, <laughs> doing all this stuff, and then then he'd go, <sighs> "Be done." He's just about. Just about had your aneurysm, and if you sort of still very <laughs> I try to look through the glass and see everybody because the room is spinning, and then all you hear in your headphones is like, "I wouldn't mind being able to get that in one take if we could just do that again." <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> it's okay. Hang on for a second. I think the EMTs should have me all set to go in a moment. <laughs> I think I need a glass Take of that later again if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was pretty much that was it. What, one of my friends, he's actually a huge Warhammer 40k fan. I actually just typed to him, um, telling him about the work that you did on it, and then his reply is like, that's freaking awesome, because he loves the show. And he never knew that even a bunch of you that were in My Little Pony also did that. He even knew that uh, Nicole Oliver has done a bunch of voice work as well. Mm -hmm. And when he found that out, he was, he was freaking out. He's like, you're just making me want to get into ponies, don't you? Because he's not a brony himself. He doesn't really want to get into it. But he, uh, I, it's like I'm urging him on now. <laughs> um, come, my friend. Come join my little pony. <laughs> it's a good place to be. It is. And you get to keep your vocal cords. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. Oh, so I'll bring on the next question. Yes, uh, this was from Imperius. Uh, Mr. Dobson, as the voice of the Hulk in Hulk Versus, are you also a big fan of the Hulk? Because the Hulk is actually his favorite hero. It's pretty cool. It's um, it was it was fun, and I and I enjoyed that series a lot too. Um, I thought it was it was um, I thought the artwork and uh, the illustrations and everything, and the and the, the story. I, actually, I, I was fortunate enough to be able to watch the last one too, um, that we worked on. And I don't know how everybody else felt about it, but but I was like blown away by the level of production and everything on it. I thought um, um, motion comics, wow, it sure come a long way, yeah. pretty phenomenal. But um, yeah, that was um, I had a blast playing, and of course it was kind of fun too because 
you know, Banner's got a sense of humor about the whole thing too. You know, <laughs> there's that in there, and the, and so he was a fun character to play for that element because he's not just like this, um, you know, just this massive, you know, destructive force walking around like Hulk smash. It was it wasn't was, you know there was a lot more elements to him, and I and so I yeah I did enjoy. It. I think working on him and seeing the last couple like the particularly the last movie too. Mm -hmm. Um, really made me a lot larger, bigger fan of Hulk, for sure. That's awesome. Uh, this, this is from Parasol. A question for all. What is your favorite song from season four so far? Ooh. Ooh. I love the Barbershop Quartet. I wish, I, you know what? You got certain little pieces of it during the entire episode, but you never got the whole song in one shot. And you know what was interesting? Was, uh, it was one of the first ones I saw, too. And that's what I need blew. the whole song. Yeah. Some, was, Stefan, put the whole song together and give it to me, please. Just once, just please, please. I'd have to go with that one too, yeah. because I was. And you know, from my standpoint too, I, I I know the people that are singing it, and I'm going, wow, I didn't know. Yes. <laughs> actually, actually, Peter, are, Peter knew and myself. Amazing. Peter What's that? and myself are working on a music project right now. Oh, really? Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Yeah. That's pretty cool. You can't tell us anymore. Yeah, nope. Nope, can't tell you anymore. Not as well comes out. <laughs> we finally got finally got to a point where we start putting vocals on it. So it took us a while to get to the vocals, but now it's like it's in his hands, and he's gonna do the vocals, and I'm gonna send it to me, put do some vocals. We're gonna give it to our friend who's gonna do all the mixing, and it's gonna be awesome. It's like, oh. Yeah. Next. Um. So this is from Leather McBrony. Uh, question uh, for you, uh, Michael is: How aware are you of military bronies, and what do you think of them? I think it's awesome, man. I, I think, uh, and I, I was in the Air Training Corps, and I, I had aspirations of being in the military full time myself. So, I mean, not only do I admire what they do, um, and uh, always very supportive of our military around the world, but um, I think it's really cool because it, it's a, it's a, because a real soldier is is a, is a is a man and woman of peace, and, that, and that's what I think. Um, Sometimes people get those wires a little crossed, and they don't realize that they're peacekeepers, mm -hmm. and they're they're willing to put their lives on the line to do just that. And um, and so I think it's only fitting that when you, you have something um, like My Little Pony, and it's you know we're talking about friendship, mm -hmm. and that's that's I mean we see the photographs and we see those people in really really extreme situations. Um, lending help to people that are in need and saving lives, and I think that's pretty cool association. So, to me, it's not a, a weird crossover. You know, like I, I think uh, I think it's a natural fit. I think because that's what we're doing. We're looking to for a peaceful world, absolutely, and, and that's what this show is all about. And so, so I'd say, damn it, yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I think it's awesome. That's what I think. I say, yeah, it's awesome. There you go. And with that, you know what we're going to do right now? We're going to cut. What? We're going to cut right now. And we're going to go to Screwball's new bit. Oh, and no. It's called, you know what's screwy. You know what's screwy? Because screwy knows what's screwy. This is a new bit. It's going to be every show. I hope you enjoy it. Screwball, here you go, buddy. To you. That's screwy. After you shave and you look in the mirror, you have no idea who the hell's looking back at you. You know what's screwy? Cheese sandwich. Absolutely amazing character. I'm losing my voice. Uh, Weird Al Yankovic was the uh, voice actor and, of course, singer of this amazing character. And I've been such a fan of his since I was a child. I'm going fan crazy right now. But uh, it, it was it was amazing. Um, and uh, just because I want to do something absolutely random, 
I'm going to show you guys how to make a cheese sandwich. We need cheese. Yummy, delicious cheese. Um, get, oh, it's stuck. There we go. Uh, and then we need some bread. We're not much for bread. Um, and then let me. You have no idea how hard it is being. Yeah, you know, you know what's screwy? Being your own cameraman. I got it. Come on. <laughs> there, bread. Perfect. And then you could do it this one of two ways. You can, you know, put it, put it, uh, actually cook it. You could just do what I do. Microwave. <laughs> this is the lazy way of doing it. There we go. What is that in there? I don't know, but I'm just gonna leave it. Popcorn. There we go. And that's how you make, very lazily, if that's even a word, how to make yummy grilled cheese sandwich. You know what's screwy? Making a cheese sandwich in a microwave. That's what's screwy. <laughs> I thought that the bread's frozen, and you didn't take the cheese out of the plastic. Yeah, I <laughs> the, the mess afterwards, and it tasted disgusting. It, it's like a cheese surprise sandwich. You bite it, and it explodes all over you. Yes, screwball. And, and <laughs> I, surprise I know, cheese I know, sandwich. I know everyone's going to ask like crazy, what's with the black bars on the side? Well, I uh, see the thing is that, yeah, I was my own cameraman. Second, I was using my phone and I was, uh, the way it's, you're supposed to hold, hold it horizontally. I wasn't, I was holding it vertical. <laughs> and that's what caused that really weird black bars. effect. <laughs> Don't worry, I had you covered, dude. It looks great. So, <laughs> hopefully every show we're going to have a new, you know what's screwy from Screwy. Uh, so if, you like that, if you like that, if you like that, tell Screwball to get off his tukukis and get some filming done. Because oh, I'm, I've been doing show. some filming and it's I cannot wait for the next one because oh, this one's my most favorite one so far. <laughs> oh, cool. And we're back to questions with one Mr. Michael Dobson. Give me another one. Okay. Oh. <laughs> no, this one's good um, because it, it, it sort of makes you think. Um, this one's from Late Metal. Question for Michael Dobson. Is bulk biceps muscular physique this, this, the strictly result of hard work or, and weightlifting, or do you think Ponyville is in danger of being excluded from the Equestria Games after a member of the team tests positive for a banned performance-enhancing substance? <laughs> Listen, I got some things I want to say about creatine, okay? <laughs> 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 so I'm saying, yeah, yeah, <laughs> It's not a bad substance. Protein. Yeah, yeah. I work hard protein. for this. I need a cup of protein over here. <laughs> protein. Hey, I brought you guys some protein. apples. I brought you guys some protein. I brought you guys some protein. <laughs> apple brown betties. Yeah. I'm apple brown betties. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my protein God. Powder. Protein powder or apple buddies. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Don't sweat it! Yeah! <laughs> all natural. All natural. It's all natural, that's right. All natural. Next. Oh my god. Um, oh, let's say my jaw hurts. This. <laughs> what? If, 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 if the son of a Companies can say made with real juice when it's only, come on, let's face it, it's, it's, just, it's just like a little eye dropping into the yeah. can, and you go, yeah, you can see it's yeah. made with real fruit juice yeah. now. I got, I got real sugar <laughs> in my glass, it's made with fruit then juice. Then I can say it's all natural! All natural! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Oh, I comb my hair. Sorry. My hair's out of place. Oh, so this one... Yeah. So this one is from Dark Amethyst. Question for Michael: Out of all the voice acting jobs you had, uh, you had done. Oh, yeah. Sorry, um, this is very weird. Um, a question for Michael: Out of all the voice acting jobs you had, did you ever think you could do MLP FIM and have received any positive feedback from the fandom? I was blown away, man. 
Uh, like I, I, I honestly was. Like, um, when when the show aired, the first episode aired, um, with with Bulk in it, and then all of a sudden I watch, I'm looking at my, my Twitter account, and I had, like, I don't know, maybe 200 people. And and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I'm just seeing the good, and all these like wonderful, like really nice words from everybody. Like it, it's a, uh, it, it it I was, I don't know, I, I was I, I was just kind of, just gobsmacked, I guess, for lack of a better expression. But it was it was just uh, I couldn't believe how amazing everybody was and all the kind outflowing words and. And uh, like I, I, I was just like, all right, I know what I'm doing right now. <laughs> These guys are awesome, and it was just, uh, I have to say, like, thank you to everybody because you guys are really, really, really amazing people. And and uh, I, and and like you know, talking, getting to know you guys, and I'm making uh, really cool friends like you guys. And and uh, Silver Slinger sent me that amazing pendant, and it was just. Um, I, I I just yeah just blown away. I I can't thank everybody enough. It's just been it's it's been pretty amazing, pretty cool. But it, it it's amazing that that's the the whole message of the show, and everybody has taken that and turned it into this global phenomena. And and I think it's I, I just think it's I think it's pretty amazing. I really do. Awesome. It's not a sticky wicket, is it? No. Not a sticky wicket. Yes, well, and well played, does it? Not, not a sticky not wicket at all. No. Next. No matter on my scones, I'm off to play the grand piano. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, so now that okay, now here, uh, this is what this is what you're gonna have to do, Michael. Um, yeah. uh, on every show, pretty much that we've ever done, yeah. there's a particular guy who always brings in the questions for us, really good ones, almost all the time, and his name right. is James Justice. Now, James, when, Justice. James Justice. Whenever, is, yes. whenever we yell. We, we always yell his name because, th think about it, James Justice sounds like a superhero yeah, he, name. He is the resident superhero of Stay Bernie, my friends. His ability to manipulate cornflakes has saved us on more than one occasion. Yes, on Planet Serial. Yes, from Planet Serial. <laughs> yeah, his, his arch nemesis, Soggy Milk, has been kept at home yes. yet another two weeks. Yes. He doesn't tell us how, but he does. He only does 2% of the crime. Yes. Barely, barely he has, the most of his not, cohort not, not the whole not the whole crime just the whole crime. <laughs> that's left a whole milk yes yes but michael what yeah. we're, we're gonna do is on three two one we're all just gonna yell at the top of our lungs and break everyone's speakers yes. so turn it down we're well, gonna all yell on, get them out now because here it comes okay. what, what are we gonna yell james yell justice. james justice okay and uh, I guess we'll do a countdown on on go three two one go yep. three two one. James Justice. <laughs> that was kind of liberating. That was kind of liberating. Yeah. <laughs> I feel a lot better. Shout shout! Let it all out. This is good. Yeah. This is good. See, this is good therapy. Good therapy. <laughs> what does James so Justice want to know this week? Oh, what's he want to know? Question for all: What music do you like to work out to when you start your morning? Uh, oh. mm, mm, mm. Uh, I'm a, uh, I'm a heavy rock kind of guy, but more like a yeah, 70s, me too. Seventies kind of rock kind of guy. So I'm, I'm sort of in the whole ACDC, you know, the yeah. Dawkin, Warrant, Zeppelin, Zeppelin, yeah. Who, it, it, dep it depends on my mood, you know. It's either the long-haired hair metal band or it's classic classic rock, one or the other, right? So yeah, sometimes, think... sometimes I'll put on like Rat or something like that, you know. Put on the spandex and do my, you know, put on the and just you know jazzercise a little bit. But it, it's it's one of those things, you know, whether, <laughs> like, I'm, do, 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 yeah, uh, whether I'm feeling it or not, you know. So, so yeah, I, I, hey, I, what I, yeah. What about you, Mike? Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm completely with you. That's, yeah. that's, it depends on my mood, mm -hmm. and, and like uh, if I if I'm doing um, if I'm training really heavy and I'm lifting weights, then then I, I want the hard rock for sure. Oh yeah, that's what I that's what the what I go. But if I'm um, but if I'm running and I'm doing a lot of cardio and stuff, oh, yeah. then it's, I like hip hop and R and B and stuff like that to yeah, listen yeah. to. Yeah. 
uh, me, myself, um, one particular song I love is uh, Archangel by Two Steps from Hell. It's orchestral, and it's it's uplifting, it's it's crazy intense, and, and there's a reason why it has over 700 listens, because I'll listen to it maybe two, three times a day, and uh, the thing is that my iPod broke, so I've been oh. without it nope. for about two weeks. No. <laughs> and so you work at Future I, Shop. Can't you just get one? I, for like three, a, Apple doesn't give us discounts. They're mean Are that way. <laughs> so I, I just ordered one in, but as soon as I get it, I'm going to listen to that song about a hundred times to catch up to all that stuff I've missed. <laughs> Archangel you know hell by Archangel? Yeah. Uh, it's uh, Archangel by Two Steps from Hell. Two Steps by, from Hell. So it's I actually I downloaded Daniel Ingram's uh, upload. Of, you know they did the entire first season of music they put out as a as a download on iTunes. So finally downloaded that. Now waiting for season two. Let's do it, Ooh. Daniel. I know you can do it. You got you got season one out. I know you can do season two. But it's like all the music from season one. It's like all in one package. It was like oh, it's all like. Really well mixed and awesome. High quality High epicness. Quality. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of hearing those sort of sound effects in the background, like, pew, pew, yes. and whatever. Yeah, <laughs> just like that. Yep. Next. That's it. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, where did I put it? Oh, so this one's from uh, Dubstep Lee. Question for Michael How did you get involved with My Little Pony? Dun, dun, dun. <gasps> I, I auditioned for Dante Caballeron yes. and was fortunate enough to get cast as that. And then when I was there, um, I was also ex um, asked if I'd like to try bulk biceps. And luckily for me, it worked out. So um, they ended up, because it was kind of, um, even, even though they explained everything to me, uh, I mean, it wasn't a really official that I had the, the role of bulk biceps. It was more like, what would you do for this? Let's put you in the in the studio and away we go today. But I mean, if I, I guess if, if it hadn't have gone over well, somebody you'd be talking to somebody else about bulk biceps right now. But but fortunately, it worked out well for me. But I, I think like working in this in the studio and, and just just doing it on the day in the in the episode that was kind of luckily for me it all worked out well. Yeah. Yep. So, so that's how that went. We just uh, glad you on the show for Dr. Caballero. Thanks, man. Because I'm a huge. You know, Daring Do Freak. I love it. Oh, loved it. Oh, my God. Thanks, I love Daring Do. I want her to have her own series, her own comic book. I want it all. I want it all. <laughs> you, know, I can see, you know what? I can see Dr. Caballeron. You know, I, I, you know what? I've actually put all the characters in my head canon actually doing, you know, all of the, the, all, all, all of the other movies, right? Have they done an homage to... to yeah. Have they did to Indiana Jones? Have yeah, done it? yeah, but basically it's all an homage to Indiana Jones. It all is. That'd so basically, cool. I've got my head cannon of they're all, you know, in every movie. I'm watching the movie, and then all of a sudden it's like Daring Do's up there, and there's Dr. Caballero, and it's like, okay. I can't watch the movies anymore. They're ruined for me. <laughs> I, I put Little Pony characters in the movie. It's like, okay. <laughs> well, that's just me, because I'm crazy. I love it. It's awesome. I'm nuts. <laughs> Next. It, oh. It's me. It is. Yeah. So this one's from Marby Z. Question for Michael. Do you plan on attendee, attending any upcoming conventions? <gasps> we yeah! we know something about that, but we can't say anything because there's no, conventions that hurt us. us. I know. Yes. But yes. So we know something you don't, and we can't say anything about it. We're sorry. 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 But Not yes. But yet. hopefully, hopefully they'll be announced really soon. I'm hoping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So, but he is coming to a convention near you. Soon. Yes. Or maybe not near you, but soon. I can't wait to meet everybody. This is going to be so much fun. Oh, yeah. I, you know what? We had, when Andrew Francis yeah. <laughs> came to his very first Milo Pony convention, mm -hmm. he was bouncing off the walls like a 12 year old. <laughs> yes. Oh, my. I did, you remember Screwy, but he went past oh, us. Yeah. Me and Screwy are walking in a hotel, and he runs past us. He doesn't just walk, he doesn't just try. He runs past us. He's got somebody made him a, 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 a freaking scarf of white with blue trim of shining armor and he's like running like the wind Woo! and i'm going dude what's up because i'm having the best time of my life <laughs> <laughs> and off he goes I was like, oh, okay. he goes. We, we have another convert yeah, that's cool. awesome <laughs> i love it yes that's too cool a friend of the show he's been on the show a couple times so 
We, uh, we, need, we need to talk to him again. We haven't. This we haven't is a fun show. Long. Andrew's awesome. Andrew's awesome. Oh god. Yeah. Yeah. We had a we had a backwards show where, where Screwball did my job and I did his job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the guest, so Screwball interviewed him. <laughs> oh, that was so that, much yeah, fun. Yeah, that was that was, that was April a, Fool's Day. It was it was great. It was it was, it was, it was, it was a, no, it was actually a one year anniversary. One year anniversary show, that's right. It was one year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, is, is two years coming up yet? No, we did two oh, years. Oh uh, wait. Nope. No? Two years is this April. Oh, that's right. Yes. March. This April. Wow. We're actually doing something. Yes. Too. We're doing something. Yes. We're doing something special. <laughs> Very special. Yeah. Yes. It's a secret. Yes. It's a secret right now. But yes. <laughs> question, Screwy. We're running up against it. Come on, like buddy. It's special. Oh, uh, this is from Flair Cobra for everyone. If you could give one piece of advice, a uh, piece of advice for your younger self, be it live acting or just avoiding some spoiled meat at the spoiled meat at the lunch line, what would it be? Uh, <laughs> oh, go ahead. Uh, mine, I would say, stay in choir because you had a lot of fun and you like to sing now. So if you had stayed in choir and stayed in or had stayed in band, you'd probably be further ahead now than you than you were now, than you are now. You know you like to sing. You should have stayed there. And besides that, there were 60 voices, and 58 of them were girls. Why didn't you stay in that class, you knucklehead? <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Mike? Yeah, I, I, you know what's funny? You should bring that up because my folks got me a guitar when I was nine, I think. Mm -hmm. And and I, I didn't really I, – I remember going to school with that, and uh, I didn't – didn't really kind of fit in well with the with the in the class that I was in. I guess mm -hmm. it was uh, I was feeling awkward with it, and I guess I didn't kind of get the encouragement that I felt I probably would have liked. I, I don't know, but but for, I was very uncomfortable, right. and I wish I'd stuck with it because I would have been a much better guitarist now. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, man, if only I'd, I'd, I'd had the passion for guitar that I have now yeah. back then, it would have been cool. Oh, yeah. My yeah. dad, my dad played trumpet in the high school band. And he also was a starter on the varsity. So he would basically go from playing the first half in his yeah. football uniform, marching with the band, playing trumpet, then go back in the second half and play. And, and it's like, my dad is awesome at, you know, music and things like that when he was younger. And I really wish I'd have stuck with it when I was younger because I know for a fact I'd, have been, I'd be better today because he was so good. So my mom said he was really, really knew how to play trumpet. It's like, oh, wow. I really wish I could have heard him play. It was like, that was cool. Yeah. What about you, Scurry? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I really don't got anything. It's just that uh, uh, stop being so shy, be more out, and be more assertive, I you're, guess, you, is the you best thing. Since we started hanging out, Scurry, you are way more assertive. And that's because this. When we first started the show. Exactly. That that's the, it's a show and it's this fandom that's changed me so much that I am the most social guy you can meet. <laughs> yeah, any, any guy who can walk any guy who can walk around a convention wearing a beanie hat and a Canadian flag as a cape, yeah, you're out there, buddy. <laughs> I love you. That's awesome. I, you. I did every you know, convention. You know, I've what, always though, you know what's great? We're up against it, so to, I need that one last awesome question. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh. Uh. Yes. I, I did this one. Um, yeah, I don't know about this one. The really new mop, 12100. Uh, question for everyone. Uh, have you watched so uh, Sochi 2014? Oh, yeah, lots of it. Yeah, yeah. Lots of it. Yeah. yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this right in. What is your most favorite part of it? Hmm. What was the favorite part of, of yeah. Sochi? Yeah, what was your favorite part? Yeah. Let's get quick. Yeah, yeah. Why am I even thinking about it? Hockey. Well, yeah. I was just going to say, yeah. Michael, there's, I there's I one thing that we both can agree on. I was up at 4 a.m. here yeah. on the West Coast watching the game at 4 a.m. Yeah. I'm so sad. I'm so <laughs> sad that the Americans beat the Russians, right? And I watched that, and that was awesome. Americans beat the yeah. Russians. And then they get fourth place and don't even get a medal. And it's like, yeah. Uh, I know. I, I had a second cousin on the 1980 U.S. Olympic team, Mark Wells. Yeah. And it's like, so um, Olympic hockey is like in my soul. So, mm -hmm. and, and having them come up fourth place after beating the Russians in the same tournament, how does that happen? I know. 
How does it you guys, oh. you guys, that, that, the, the American versus Canada team was the most stressful thing imaginable. It was. Yes. It was. Like, it was. I was like, holy cow, I am so shocked that our defense was, that it was able to hold you guys back, but it's yeah. just like, I thought for sure it would have turned out like the women's. Like, the women's Olympic was ice, even man. more. You get more room for that Olympic ice. And it's like, yeah. you know the women's one, though, oh, the women's one was just intense. Don't know what's going to happen. I, I loved the, the the comic that came out. It was hilarious. Right before the Sweden Canada game, mm -hmm. there was a there was a cartoon that came out, and it, and it was the coach talking to the men's hockey team, and he was saying, "Play like a girl." <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> you, have, you seen, have you ever seen I Animal love, Olympics? What's that? Did you ever see the movie Animal Olympics? Animal Olympics. Animal Olympics is what it was called. No, no. Okay, it was basically made by Linsberger Studios for the nineteen eighty. Olympics way back when and it, okay. had, it had like uh, Gilda Radner in it and it had Billy Crystal in it and it had all these voice actors awesome, awesome. basically yeah. it was an anthropomorphic you know ode to the Olympics but of course it got uh, pulled because we didn't the Americans didn't go in 1980 but uh -huh. it got recut together as one movie right and it's pr and I actually have a cell from that movie I was gonna bring that up I actually have a cell from oh no that. way oh yeah it's awesome Kurt Wolfner I, I that. that's pretty cool I got Kurt Wolfner the, the Austrian ski god yeah but uh, wonderful. <laughs> Where was I going with this? I lost it. But anyway, check out Animal Olympics. If anybody out there hasn't seen it, it's a really great movie. It's got a really great voice cast. It's really well done. Um, so check that out at some point. Um, and with that, we are at the end of the program. So I want to thank, uh, you know, yeah. we got, let's see, let me go through my list here. Did we do that? Did that? Did that? Okay, T-shirt. Everybody knows that we have a new T-shirt for, the, well, it's not new so far. It's been up for six months. But we have this T-shirt over here. Uh, beautiful t-shirt but done by Trish that you guys wanted it you got it beautiful t-shirt we want to see you guys wearing this t-shirt during the summer at all the conventions we'll sign them we really love the support you guys give us every time we uh, turn on that camera so thanks a lot for that check out the t-shirt redbubble.com everfree network we're going to have some more me and me and guns and, and private stampede have something coming up here in the summertime you're going to love t-shirt wise um we don't do call-outs anymore to the rest of the Everfree Network because you know what? We've been doing it for a year and a half. You guys know what's out there. It's awesome. we got lots of really great live content um, every day. Every night of the week, we got something new. On the radio side or on, or on the live side, we got something brand new. So come down to everfreenetwork.com. Check out what's new. we got shows. Anything you could even think about, we got a show for you. So go down there and check them out. Um, big thank yous to Michael Dobson for taking time out of his busy schedule. Um, with his family fun. and everything, and coming and joining us tonight. Thanks for having me. I just wanted because he he did it for me a little while ago, and it was re really nice of him to do. But my buddy Lord Comet, if you're out there and you're listening, this is a big shout out to you. I owe you a few, but I wanted to say thanks so much for your support. You've been great, man. That's yeah. really cool. He's, Thank you he's a good guy. Awesome. Um, filming is magic. We did our outro. And, 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 else, yeah. yep, let me, and Silver Slayer. Silver Slayer. Thank you, sorry. Everybody yep. out there who's doing, where's my new outro? There it is. Um, Snowflake. Snowflake. Um, we're going to see you at BabsCon, buddy. It's going down. Trust me. BronyCon, Trotcon, Leather. Everfree Northwest, BronyCan, Care to One who helps me do this whole thing, my roommate, my landlord, and my buddy. Um, I couldn't do it without him. My wonderful girlfriend, Amy. Love you, baby. Uh, EFN, Screwball, and you out there who come every week, whenever we turn on that camera and make fools out of ourselves. Every, <laughs> every time. I love you all. Um, yeah! With that, next show guest in two weeks. Guess. Come on, come on, screwy. Guess who's next? Uh, guess who's next? I. There's too many. What? What too is many? it? Too many. Who is it? Peter freaking <laughs> new. Yes. Peter freaking new is yeah. coming. again. He's awesome. Friend of the program. Lots to talk about because we got singing Big Mac. We got Auntie Appleseed. We got all kinds of stuff that he's done this season. So plenty and plenty of things Ooh. to talk about. With Peter New in two weeks. Go over to manlysbrony.com, give a couple of bits to the charity. As usual, thank you very much for all your support on that. We got the big pile of stuff over here, and Michael's sending us DVDs signed. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be awesome. So, with that, we'll see you guys in two weeks. Thanks a lot for coming. Say goodnight, Mike. Good night, Mike. I know that. I know. Yeah, it's terrible. Oh, 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 yeah, good. Good. <laughs> Dusty Screwy, thanks so much. And thanks to everybody for listening. You guys are the most awesome fans in the world. I just have to say that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And we'll see you guys in two weeks. Ciao.
Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. We hate to leave you, but we'll be back soon. Good night, sweetheart. Good night. Good night, sweetheart. Good night.